Hello, everyone. We celebrate today, Monday, the third week of Easter. And that's the day is offered for all of our first responders, for all those who are out there on the front lines fighting the coronavirus, all of our healthcare professionals, our doctors and nurses. You know who you are. We pray for you always. You are very courageous in that vital ministry that you perform to the community. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us now place ourselves in the presence of God and ask God to pardon and strengthen the times we have sinned. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did, for through the healing past for remedies, you have conformed us to his nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called synagogue of freed men Syrians and Alexandrians and people from Cilicia and also Asia came forward and debated with Stephen. They could not understand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, We have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, accosted him and seized him and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified, This man never stopped saying things against his holy place and the law. For we have heard him proclaim that this Jesus of the Nazarene will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like that of an angel. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight, they are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declare my ways and you answer me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts and that will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen, I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. to John. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had only been one boat there, and that Jesus had not gone along with the disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread, and the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats. They came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, 
when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for life eternal, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set a seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Last Saturday, I spoke about spiritual and corporal works of mercy. I spoke about the diaconate and how all of us really were called to be ministers of service to one another, not just those who are ordained. Sometimes we think of our lives and our discipleship in terms of doing in terms of being involved, in terms of accomplishing something. And Jesus is very plain today, and he tells us that this is really the important work of God, that you believe in the one he sent, because everything that we do, everything revolves around our belief. We believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We believe that God the Father Creator sent him to us to fulfill the promises of old that he would bring us back to him again. We believe in the power of Jesus not just to feed 5,000 men on the hillside with loaves of bread and a few fish, but also to heal us from sin and to heal us from death. We believe in Jesus as really the way, the truth, and the life, the one who is really there for us every day of our lives. So the important work that we do is the work of faith. To believe means that we pray, to believe in God, that he hears our prayers. And ultimately we know he answers our prayers according to his will. As Jesus prayed in the garden, he said, not my will, but your will be done. And the same goes for ourselves. We don't manipulate God, we cannot control God, we don't pray and somehow God has to perform. But we do believe that God hears our prayers and we do believe that he is a loving father. We believe also that we are his children, born again by water and the Holy Spirit at our baptism. We believe Jesus when he says, uh, I will not leave you orphans, that he'll be with us along life's journey. So during these difficult times, when our faith is tested, during these difficult times when we have questions and perhaps doubts and hesitations, we believe that God loves us nonetheless, and we pray that God will give us the courage and the strength to be persevering, to be there for our families and our loved ones, to be there for our communities, and to do the best we can under these circumstances, that we do not look at some of the ugliness and some of the difficulties around us as being God's will, but rather a part of our human condition. We have been facing such things over the centuries and will probably consider those part of our future. But today, let us remember that the most important thing we do as Catholic Christians, as disciples of Jesus Christ, is to believe in who he is, to believe in what he has done, to believe in what he promises he will do, and that is one day call all of us forth to be with him in the kingdom of heaven. This is what we profess every time we pray the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, which sums up the major tenets of our faith. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We now pause for a few moments to place our petitions before God and let our response today be, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all of our scientists and doctors around the world that they work together to find a solution to this uh, coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray this day for all of those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, particularly those who are suffering from the virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose names have been placed on our altar for the season of Easter, and for all those who you make known now in the privacy of your own hearts. We pray to the Lord. We pray this day for laws which protect all human life from conception until a natural death. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are called to the priesthood and religious life in the diaconate, that they be persevering in their response. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pause that at our own personal prayers and petitions from the privacy of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask in that to listen to our prayers, that if you will to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, who are through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. My brothers and sisters, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But at this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly employ by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving past of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed virtue, Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Aden and all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely upon failing help. For this sacrifice and our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to conform, be confirmed in faith and charity of your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of your family, we have summoned before you, and your compassion, the merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now pray to God our Father, use the words Jesus, Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let us pause now and or for a sign of peace for those who may be viewing this Mass with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only said the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he who by his redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. The Almighty God bless you always, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our prayer to the Virgin Mary for protection. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick. At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, Our Lady of New York, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide so that, as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and peace he might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas. We are put to the test. And deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. May God bless you with a happy and healthy day.